Hey, and welcome to the show. Uh, we've been doing this yesterday as well, but uh, other things came up, and so I'm doing it today. Uh, first of all, um, I'd like to say that it was a pleasure to uh, cover the Roe Ro v. Wade uh, protest that happened at the Columbus, uh, the Columbus uh, Ohio State House uh, this past Sunday. Uh, apparently, they also had one on Saturday, which I had no idea about. I, was, I would have been there to cover that too. And they also had one in Cincinnati. I think I'm not sure if Cincinnati or um, Cleveland. Uh, I'm hearing different things, but apparently it may have just been Cleveland. And if it was Cleveland, then and I, I said it was Cincinnati. And I apologize. I'm, just didn't know really what, where it was at as far as the park goes. So, uh, but this still went on, and it had thousands of people there, which is good. Um, only curious thing that happened that day was uh, the real progressives uh, correspondent, uh, say JJ. Uh, uh, and everybody who was doing lives at that time during the protest that were asked to shut down their lives. I thought that was kind of odd, and I don't know if he was given a reason or. If you said a reason, but anyway, um, but anyway, see, uh, Sunday's, uh, event was, was, um, in, in downtown Columbus, obviously not as big as far as turnout as the uh, previous one, uh, and not even, not even bigger, uh, bigger than what, uh, did on Saturday, but when you have a weeks long, uh, protest over a very important, uh, law that should never be overturned, that should be, uh, codify, I guess the term is, which is uh, to make it permanent. When you have that not happening and it, the possibility of it, of it uh, being overturned, I think uh, a month of protest uh, is is is, uh, is appropriate. But they they uh, committed a week to it, so that's good enough, I guess. Anyway, that's not what that's not why I'm here right now. Um, Warren Mosler, I guess, went to Argentina. Um, I think I guess it was at the, from the second to the fifth, and uh, he brought another person with him. And but uh, the thing I'm I'm going to be reading off uh, is what he put on as far as uh, um, it's entitled Argentina Inflation, and it has his uh, his uh, uh, email address, which is Warren dot Mosler at gmail dot com. And this is from uh, May 1st of the, of the of this year, obviously. Uh, Brando's Aries. Um, it starts off with current fundamentals slash monetary operations. The state desires to provision itself. The state le uh, levies a tax payable in pesos to create sellers of goods and services seeking pesos in exchange. The pesos to pay taxes and buy state securities come only from the state's uh, state through its agents, which includes the central bank and its regulated commercial bank members. The state can then spend pesos to provision itself. Taxes can then be paid and state securities can be purchased. <coughs> Model for analysis. Europeans colonial, uh, colonizing Africa. The British desire to grow coffee. The British levied a hut tax payable in script, or sorry, script called a crown. The crown was the tax credit that fulfilled the tax liability. Huts were to be burned in the cases of non-payment. Uh, let's see, we now burn houses. Uh, sometimes that's, that's done to, to collect insurance, but that's not the here nor there or anything I've ever done. Uh, but that would be foreclosed as far as banks and all other stuff. So that's a different version, obviously. But uh, anyway, uh, huts were uh, to be burned in the case of non-payment. The British paid Africans uh, Africans crown for working at a plantation. Um, let see. The Africans were okay. I've already read. Uh, wait, no, I didn't. Uh, Africans worked at a plantation and got paid in crown. Africans then paid their hut tax and avoided that penalty. The British always spent more crown than were paid in taxes. The difference was it saved. Monetary lessons from Africa: the sequence, tax liabilities slash paid work work slash payment of taxes. 
British spending preceded African payment of uh, taxes. The British always spent more than they collected, which the accountants uh, label deficit spending and public debt. The British deficit spending equals African savings of crown. The British public uh, debt equals African savings equals net money supply. The net money supply is funded by British deficit spending. The public debt equals crown spent by the British that have not yet been ta and used to pay taxes. Unemployment is a monetary phenomenon. The British offered employment on the plantation to anyone looking for work. Therefore, there was no unemployment. The only reason to work for the British was to earn crown, to either pay taxes or to save. If the British restricted available work, Africans would not be able to earn enough pay their uh, enough to pay their taxes and save as desired. The evidence of this restriction would be unemployment. The value of the currency. The British were the single source of crown to pay taxes. Therefore, they set the wage rate at the plantation. The currency is a monopoly and monopolist set price. If the British paid one crown uh, a day, the crown would be worth the equivalent of a day of labor at the plantation. If the British instead paid two crown uh, a day, one crown would only be worth half a crown or half a day of work or uh, you know, labor or work. The value of the currency is a function of price, prices paid by the state when it spends. Interest rates. The British never paid interest on savings of a of crown. They knew the value of a crown was a matter of prices they paid and not interest rates. The British knew interest rates would provide the much income, uh, that much income to savers who would then have less need to work at the plantation. Or plantations, excuse me. The British knew that uh, that paying interest would decrease and not increase the exchange value of the crown. <coughs> oh, so I did that. Yeah. The Argentina peso, pesos to pay taxes and to buy state securities, come only from the central bank and is regulated member banks. The economy needs state spending to, the, to be able to pay taxes and fulfill its savings desires. State spending or lending necessarily precedes the payment of taxes and purchases of state securities. This uh, obviates, obviates? Uh, yes, any notion of solvency as peso spending is in no case operationally uh, revenue constrained. Domestic output as to total real wealth. This is real wealth uh, category. Imports add to uh, real wealth. Exports remove real wealth. Uh, real wealth. Imports minus exports are the real terms of trade. Full employment optimizes real domestic output. Total real wealth is optimized by sustaining full employment and optimizing real terms of trade. The exchange rate policy. Full employment can only be sustained with floating exchange rate policy. Sustaining a, a fixed exchange rate carries the risk of periodic episodes of unemployment to sustain positive foreign exchange reserve balances. With fixed exchange rates, markets determine state interest rates. With floating exchange rates, the central bank sets policy rates. Foreign exchange markets lead Argentina's inflation. Pesos interest on the uh, peso in, uh, interest on the public debt is paid by paid to entities that sell those pesos for other currencies. Indexation of public debt increases future state peso interest payments. State issuance of term securities elevates and fixes future interest payments. 
um, elevated bank and other business profit margins channel peso earnings to, to sales in foreign exchange markets. Asset diversify, uh, di 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 <laughs> diversification there we go, by, pe by pensions and corporate reserves channels pesos to sale in foreign exchange markets. Proposals Floating exchange rate retains foreign exchange reserves. Permanent zero rate policy, no state uh, peso interest expense. Uh, okay, so uh, that was no state peso interest ex uh, interest expense. Uh, no state insurance of securities. Narrow banking financial assets not eligible collateral. Regulated bank interest rate bar margin margins margins. There we go. Regulate asset diversification of state supported entities. Initiate an employed uh, an employed labor buffer stock policy. Renegotiating the IMF agreement. The IMF's pri uh, primary interest is to ensure Argentina can service the IMF debt. A source of Argentine foreign currency income is its gross exports, which are currently $100 billion annually. A 3% export tax payable in U.S. fully service Argentina's IMF debt and far better secures the IMF loan to, uh, to Argentina than the current IF, IMF agreement. Replacing the current agreement with a 3% export tax frees Argentina to pursue its desired economic policies. Further considerations. The IMF never mentions gross exports, only net uh, exports. Oh wait, I'm sorry. Hold on. The IMF never mentions gross exports or real exports, and only uh, net uh, exports. U.S. Federal Reserve Bank res research now uh, indicates that inflation is not a function of inflation expectations. Dollar usage by the population does not diminish gross exports nor impede Argentina's ability to fiscally sustain full employment policy. Sustaining positive real interest rates to subdue inflation is a flawed policy that instead works to perpetuate there we go, and <laughs> exacerbates inflation. With a floating exchange rate, the balance sheet of the central bank is of no financial or economic consequence. Fixed exchange rates have historically been tools of colonial exploitation. Export price and domestic inflation. Residents are competing with non-residents for domestic output. The allocation between residents and non-residents is a state policy option. Higher export uh, prices can promote an increase in nominal net exports, which further promotes currency appreciation uh, that insists d domestic inflation. Market forces work to ensure that living wages paid to employee employed uh, buffer stock workers support all workers. Advance proposals for price stability, equity, and security. Number one, shift to a property tax to reduce real compliance costs. Fully provision high quality public services, including free education exclusive uh, exclusive inclusive excuse me inclusive graduate school comprehensive health care and uh, efficient transportation networks fully provision strategic buffer stocks that's number three implement comprehensive energy cons conservation number five looks like include uh, uh, inclusion excuse me in uh, global currency and, and dices and that was, let me go back up here, 
That was uh, Warren Mosler's and Argentina inflation. It went from currency fundamentals, uh, monetary operations to, you know, pretty much everything in between as far as that part goes. Anyways, that's the first portion of things. Uh, I, will be, I will be back with other, uh, with another story. Okay. Oh, wow. Okay, that was... <laughs> wow, I have another raider. Or someone just played Screamo. Yeah, I think that's what happened. I think I have another raid, though. Um... Andy Attack 2018, thank you for the raid and this and Slayer Music. Thanks for playing Screamo. Um, hey, welcome back to the show. Uh, next up, I will be reading something from uh, gims.org.uk, or this would be the. Uh, was that Gower? Uh, Gower is an initiative for modern money studies. And this is a, a article called Journey to the Heart of Argentina. And this also, I believe, includes um, Warren Mosler. So this was put up on uh, uh, Friday the 13th, uh, this past Friday. Uh, between, uh, it starts off uh, with between May, wait a minute. Yeah, I think so. Uh, between May 2nd and May 5th, 2020, this uh, person, Carlos, had a had the opportunity to join ec uh, economist Warren Mosler's visit to Buenos Aires, organized by uh, Pimus Para El. I'm probably going to murder his name, and I apologize if I do. Uh, De Sorolo, uh Nacional, and Grupa, Grupa Bolivia. Again, I'm sorry, I tried as far as pronouncing it, but anyway. Um, and I'd like to thank them for doing that, regardless of this, uh, for Warren Moser and, and uh, Carlos, I guess. I don't know him personally, obviously, but anyway. Um, in this way, the, inter the interest in monetary theory has allowed Moser's analysis to be orientated towards the specific case of Argentina. And it has been a fascinating experience that has taken us to the bowels, bowels, excuse me, bowels of the country's economic or economy. The organizers asked Moser to focus his proposal on two things: the possibility of achieving full employment without inflation and economic sta uh, state. Uh, Carlos has dubbed it the learner point, and uh, Argentina's latest agreement with the. IMF. Moses pre present, uh, presented his proposal at several public events to managers of the central bank, to the leaders of the public financial institution uh, Banco Nacional at the University of Murano, uh, and vi in a visit to uh, uh, Rio de uh, San Diego, I guess I pronounced that right, shipyard and other radio program. And, oh, sorry, and the radio program, uh, Giaria Monet, uh, Monetaria Moderna Presenta, okay, a lot of us. Um, his conclusion is that Argentina's problem is primarily of a fiscal nature. Since Argentina currently spends 8% of its GDP on interest payments derived from a public debt securities, and Mosler's estimations are, uh, estimates that this figure will soon rise to 20%. On the other hand, the official unemployment rate is not very close, uh, oh, sorry, very high, 7%. But youth unemployment is over 30%. In addition, the real unemployment rate is much higher than the official one. And poverty reaches 37.3% with a marginal uh, poverty rate of 8.2%. Added to this is the uh, enormous problem of inflation which currently stands at 55.1% uh, per year, but it is expected to exceed 60% by the end of the year. The specific measures he proposed were threefold. The adoption of floating exchange rates, 
a permanent zero interest rate policy, and the implementation of job guarantee based on employment buffer stocks. The adoption of floating exchange rates is the measure that would make it impossible to carry out the other two. Since only floating exchange rates allow for permanent full employment policies and zero interest rates de decided by the central bank, currently Argentina has a fixed exchange rate of the peso against the dollar. The reason for this is that there is a belief among the leadership and the general population that Argentina's main problem is external constraint. Therefore, it is believed that the Argentina peso is worthless and that it is necessary to maintain large foreign exchange reserves in order to import and grow. This puts the Argentine, uh, puts the Argentine ec uh, economy at the mercy of financial uh, speculators. Yeah. Um, since Argentina has to defend the exchange rate, yeah, defend the exchange rate by buying Argentina pesos through its dollar reserves, the consequence is that Argentina periodically suffers debt crisis and the risk of running out of services or service uh, reserves, excuse me, which drives up uh, interest rates. Uh, inflation and unemployment Mosler proposed is to adopt a floating exchange rate so as not to have uh, to defend a fixed exchange rate by means of foreign exchange reserves and for the Argentina or Argentine economy to function exclusively through the national currency. He gives uh, as an example the debt crisis in Mexico in 94 and Russia in 98. Both countries adopted floating exchange rate policies in the face of explosive debt crises resulting from fixed exchange rates. The consequence uh, was that after, that after the introduction of the floating exchange rates, there was a sharp adjustment in which the Mexican peso and the ruble lost 66% and 75% of their exchange value against the dollar, respectively. Thereafter, the value of the currencies stabilized and and then gradu gradually recovered according to moser something similar would happen to argentina because the argentine economy is similar to that of russia and mexico currently the official exchange rate of the argentina peso is 116.25 pesos per dollar and the exchange uh, rate in the black market the so-called blue dollar is 202 pesos per dollar Therefore, the devaluation resulting from the floating exchange rates would bring the value of the official peso to approximately the value of the blue dollar. After this adjusted adjustment, the value of the peso would stabilize and then recover progressively, as occurring with the Mexican peso and the ruble. In response to this proposal, Argentine leaders argue that such a devaluation of approximately 60% would increase the price of imports and that the poorest classes would not even be able to buy food for substances. Uh, however, Moser argues that this problem would be solved by means of subsidies and pesos to those who need them and an indexation of salaries that require it. In addition, Mosler also points out that the price of the Argentines, Argentina's exports would, pr would become cheaper and therefore the devaluation would increase the country's exports. In addition, annual inflation is already at about 60% or so, forcing periodic wage indexes, indexation. Therefore, floating exchange rate, uh, rates would require a new and financial indexation before entry the period of stability. This leads us to the second proposal, permanent zero interest rates and the renunciation, uh, yeah, renunciation of issuing any public debt. Currently, Argentine uh, interest rates are 47%. This reflects a self-defeating attitude similar to that of fixed exchange rates. Argentines believes that uh, Argentines believe that without very high interest rates like uh, le, uh, interest rates like the current ones, the Argentine peso would lose all its value, and therefore, high interest rates are the only incentive for the current uh, currency markets to accept the peso. This generates a constant flow of peso directly into the international currency 
markets where pesos are exchanged for dollars. This dynamic floods the foreign exchange markets with pesos and causes the peso to devalue constantly. This, uh, according to Mosler, is the main source of inflationary pressures in Argentina. Currently, Argentina spends 8% of its GDP on interest payments, but according to Moses' estimates, this figure will soon, and to, uh, will soon be 20% mainly due to interest payments on inflation-linked debt securities. Real monetary time bombs that already represent 20% of the total public debt and amount to $70 billion. Moser proposes to eliminate the issuance of public debt securities since Argentina is a country that enjoys monetary sovereignty and therefore does not need to uh, either collect taxes or issue debt to finance its public spending. He also urges Argentine pol uh, policymakers to stop talking only about the primary fiscal deficit which does not include the interest payments derived from the debt and suggest that we that when de dealing with the fiscal debt they should do uh, so ta talking in, uh, taking into account the enormous and unnecessary amount of pesos that are permanently going to the foreign exchange markets to be exchanged for dollars. In response to this unfounded expressions of fear about the value of the peso, Mosler pointed out that the value of the peso corresponds to the Argentine GDP and to all the products that can be purchased with pesos. To maintain that peso would lose all its value if interest rates were zero uh, percent as an abs absurd as saying that meat, soybeans, grain, gas, oil, tourism, and all products produced by Argentina economy would lose all their value. This is simply not going to happen, especially at a time when Argentine exports are reaching record levels. As long as taxes have to be paid in Argentine pesos, the value of the peso will, will never be zero. Only in an unimaginable case in which no taxes would have to be paid in Argentina would the value of the peso be zero. With floating exchange rates, interest rates would no longer be determined by the markets, but by the central bank. Therefore, once floating exchange rates are adopted, the level of interest rates in Argentina should be zero and the Argentinian government should renounce the issuance of debt securities. All the above brings us to Moser's last proposal, job guarantees. Based on unemployment, uh, oh, sorry, based on employment buffer stocks, this proposal is only sustainable over time with floating exchange rates that avoid having to adopt fiscal austerity measures to defend fixed exchange rates. In addition, the job guarantee would eliminate any inflationary pressures that may have uh, subs subsist, subsisted, I guess, from floating exchange rates and the elimination of possible uh, interest rates. Sin since Guaranteed labor acts as a wage uh, anchor in both downturns and upturns. As Moser uh, tirelessly repeated in, its, in his exp uh, expositions, the price level of an economy and therefore its level of inflation can only be explained by the price that the state is willing to pay for the goods and services it needs to supply itself. This especially concerns the price of labor reflected its w in wages since the origin of all goods and services is socially embodied human labor. According to Mosler, the wage level is not the cause of inflation in Argentina. Therefore, the state would have no difficulty in setting up a program similar to the, but broader than the so-called Plan Jeffers, uh, Y Jeffers which until a few years ago served with a uh, job guarantee in Argentina. I wonder if I'm pronouncing that wrong. Uh, jefes versus jefes maybe, I have no idea. Anyway, uh, <laughs> I apologize if I get that wrong. Uh, guarantees in Argentina, under, the, under this model, every, anyone who wants and is able to work but cannot work or cannot find work in either the private sector or the permanent, uh, or permanent public sector should receive a traditional job until he or she can be incorporated into work in the private sector or the permanent public sector. 
The purpose of the job guarantee is not produ- 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 uh, is, is not production per se, but to demonstrate the beneficiary's work capacity. Since the private uh, sector generally only likes to hire people who are already working, therefore guaranteed work should be implemented, uh, implemented after the government uh, after the government has decided on the desired size of the public sector to ensure good quality public services. The job guarantee wage would become the minimum wage of the economy and would act as automatic price stabilizer in both uh, expansionary and rece- recessionary ec- uh, economic periods while, el- while eliminating poverty and employment or unemployment. But be, uh, before going into IMF agreement, Moser also pointed out that in Argentina there is a problem with market regulation. According to Moser, this is due to a high concentration in strategic productive sectors that leads to uh, allego, allegopolistic uh, practices. His proposal is to regulate those of uh, these um, allegopolistic, allegopolistic markets to limit their excessive profit margins and avoid speculative uh, practices, especially in the banking and primary sectors. Finally, he derived, uh, he delivered, excuse me, into the t- uh, tepestious field of the agreement with uh, the IMF. The agreement includes a loan of 45 billion of numerous. Uh, condition, conditionalists uh, that are very harmful to Argentina, such as the issuance of long-term debt securities and fiscal austerity measures. Moser proposed to replace this agreement with one of this uh, one that is more beneficial to both Argentina and the IMF. His proposal is to repay the loan through a three percent tax on Argentina gross exports. These exports amount to a total value of approximately 100 billion per year, de- uh, dedicating 3% of that figures, uh, figure to loan repayment would be beneficial to the IMF because it would ensure that it would receive dollars from the only source of dollar inflows into the, uh, into the country exports. This means that no currency exchange would have to take place to make payments. Moreover, the IMF would no longer have to worry about lo- imposing any kind of conditionality uh, on Argentina, uh, Argentine policies. For its part, the Argentine government would be able to ex- exercise, exercise excuse me, its political sovereignty without any constraint from the IMF in the form of conditionalities. Moreover, the 3% tax could be deducted from the exporter's other tax if, taxes if it deemed it appropriate, so that there would be no monetary increase in the tax burden. I believe that Argentine, uh, that the Argentine government should listen to Moser's message and implement the measures he proposes. The achievements of an Argentina with full employment, price stability, and well-regulated markets would be bo- beyond imagination uh, beyond imagination. If such a situation were sustained over a prolonged period of time, I am convinced that Argentina could once again become the great world economic power it once was and regain this rightful place of relevance on the international scene. Um, Euro de Lendes est, I guess. Um, anyway. Well, that was uh, the story that was uh, that uh, Warren Mosler um, uh, put up on Twitter, and the, the proposals that he also put on Twitter. I also just read was the first one uh, as you come into this uh, um, episode. Um, anyway, so and just a friendly reminder: tomorrow I will be uh, at the Green Party. Um, Protest in uh, downtown Columbus that starts at 12 noon. That will be not, that won't be on Real Progressive uh, uh, Facebook. They have other, uh, they have other things possibly going on during that time. So uh, I will be doing that um, on YouTube, but it'll be a different channel. And once I'm able to put it down, and I'll be able to share that link. Um, it's not it's not this one either. It's a, it's a different channel that I'm. Um, pursuing and developing as we go along anyway uh let's see and i've been 
wondering, uh, trying to get uh, more people uh, at Real Progressives to, like, they've been really busy doing their own thing and really busy with other Real Progressive uh, affi affiliated projects. I put up a poll um, asking people if, they, if they'd be willing to, uh, if it was produced by realprogressives.org, would be willing to learn modern monetary theory directly from the textbooks that was, or textbook, I'm sorry, uh, that was produced by uh, L. Randall Ray, Bill Mitchell, and, um, oh, shoot. I want to say Matt, uh, Matt Watts. So his last name is Watts. I remember that, but I can't remember the first one, unfortunately. But anyway, um, they thought it was a great idea, but again, just time constraints. So, what I'm going to attempt to do, and uh, as far as my substack is, I'm going to attempt to go from page one all the way until the last page and read it off and you know, just try to help understand or try to help people understand that they don't know. Um, try to, I guess, teach in, to a certain degree when I'm not a teacher by any, by any stretch of imagination. I'm a, I'm a half-assed reader as it is. But anyway, <laughs> my point being is I'm going to try to bring that to my substack. stack. Um, and if you are interested in uh, learning MMT directly from me, directly from the textbooks for now until time uh, becomes freed with those who know more about MMT than I do uh, and are in, within the real, real progressive .org, uh universe um, or galaxy, whichever you want to call them, um, then uh, go to calvintaylor.substack.com and subscribe. You can do it for free, but I'll be starting that at some point this week. Um, probably by Friday since I do have two things to do tomorrow. Or not tomorrow, but uh, two days, next couple days. Um, anyways, but uh, for the moment, um, you know what? I may be able to pull off one more, actually. Uh, so, uh, stay tuned. Okay, I wanted to give you a little extra information as far as uh, tomorrow's protest I'll be uh, covering. Uh, it is uh, the Ohio Green Party uh, Stop HB 434 rally. Uh, let's see, rally demonstration starts at noon, uh, Wednesday, May 18, 2022, Ohio State House, west from uh, sidewalk uh, in Columbus. Uh, let's see, speakers will be Pat Morita, uh, Ohio Nuclear Free, War uh, Free Network. Uh, Terry Lodge, Attorney and Others, uh, the uh, HB 434, uh, the Advanced Nuclear Technology Help, uh, Helping Energy Mankind, ATHAM Act, is another radioactive taxpayer, uh, uh, Boondoggle, has passed the Ohio House and has moved on to the Ohio Senate. They haven't even revoked HB6 yet, and no one, not one of the conspirators in HB6 has gone to jail, but this is an even bigger swindle. Uh, obviously, this is their words, not mine. <laughs> they ha uh, let's see. One company stands to benefit, E-Generation of Cleveland, and the floodgate will be open for others. This is a corporate welfare. HB... Uh, 434 will could create an unaccountable nuclear agency with no responsibility to the public. The uh, agency will be buried in the notoriously secretive Jobs Ohio nonprofit corporation, uh, excused from public accessibility under the Open Records Act, the Sunshine Act, and Ohio's ethics laws. Will have no budget limits on use of taxpayer funds. It's not taxpayer, but anyway provides no financial protections for the public from accidents or spills, is vague about radioactive waste had, uh, handling and disposal and many other uh, important aspects. It's sponsored uh, by uh, Ohio Nuclear Free Network, uh, Our Revolution, Green Party of New York. New York, I'm talking about Ohio. Oh, I had New York in my head. Anyway, uh, the Green Party of Ohio opposes HB 434 and supports the rights to uh, right of the communities to know what it is in their neighborhood and have to say 
and have a say in decisions that affect their health, safety, and quality of life. Let's see. Again, that is... Where's that? Uh, it's tomorrow. Um, uh, tomorrow, uh, 12 noon, uh, Columbus House, uh, Ohio State House, West Front Sidewalk. That'll be tomorrow as far as that part goes. And the other one is Accountability for Casey. Uh, it's, at, uh, it's on Thursday, May 19th. Now, the PDT is 9 a.m. to 10 a.m., but that's like, I think, I want to say that's like 12 or 1 to 2 o'clock, is about, so it's an hour, according to this, anyway. Um, let's see. Accountability of Casey. Uh, just find some uh, information. For nearly 18 months now, the family of Casey Goods, Jr., Goodson Jr. has had to fight for accountability for his murder while this, while this fight has a long focus on Franklin County Sheriff's Deputy uh, Jason Mead uh, at Convict Mead. Okay. Um, the fight also requires accountability from the government agency that enabled a sheriff's deputy with a, a violent history to take uh, Casey's life. And there's other things going on, but that's beside the point. But that's at 9 to 10 PDT, which I guess for me would be at 12 to 1, I think. Anyways, that's going on on Thursday, and I'll be, uh, I will be covering from both as far as that part goes. So join me on those two days for that. Um, you support, uh, you can support the channel that, uh, the, the channel that I'm on at that time. So, uh, subscribe, comment, um, give it a, uh, give it a thumbs up and stuff of that nature. Anyway, uh, I'm going to try and make this channel which uh, I have uh, named just Calvin's uh, Leftist News, and I put the leftist part in this way, because you never know. Anyway, so yeah, uh, that I'm gonna try to make that my protest uh, slash inf uh, leftist information type, type thing. Um, anyway, but that's pretty much what I got today. So uh, thank you for watching, um, and subscribe to this channel if you like the stories and other things I brought to you today. Um, and look forward, and, if, again, if you want to learn MMT, uh, one, you can go to realprogressive.org, and two, you can eventually <laughs> listen to me on my Substack reading from the actual textbook. I'm just being like honest about that. I'm reading from the textbook. Um, still very new. I'm still kind of new at this. I can uh, debate my butt off as far as the part goes and share whatever insight I may have learned. Um, also, I may I make mistakes. But once I find out about those mistakes, I backtrack, apologize for it, and move on. At least I tried to anyway. But anyway, but on one final thing, uh, Bill Mitchell does actually have a uh, another uh, blog up, and evidently someone has decided to uh, take his uh, take the information he does and make it their own. Um, and I guess they profit off of it. Uh, I'm not going to mention the person's name or the website's name, but uh, if you look up Bill Mitchell on uh, uh, Twitter, uh, he'll have a, at least a link of where he, uh, he's warning you not to go. Anyway, so let's see. I'm going to try to see if I could do one more here. Uh, this is a very lengthy, uh, detailed uh, article, a blog about uh, uh, from uh, Mr. Mitchell from Monetary Theory. Uh, by the way, it is uh, bilbo.economicoutlook.net. Biodiversity, sensitive, urban design, and the silence of our political parties. This was uh, put up a couple days ago now. Uh, well, yesterday now, actually. Uh, and I'll read as much as I can. I'll just say that. Um, Australia is in the last week of a federal election campaign, which has been marked by a disturbing absence of any policy vision by either man, main party, which might address the most important issues confronting society and our land. Hopefully, the conservatives will get their marching orders this coming week. I'd, I schedule a rare glass of champagne around 2200 on Saturday when the results should be known. Well, he says, of course. And the worst government in my lifetime will be gone. The problem is the labor opposition is also short of policy mission. They have been too scared to enunciate anything much worth 
thinking about on climate, housing, education, healthcare, urban planning, etc. Because as the main narrative goes, they're feared being uh, wedged by the conservative government who lacks any remote, uh, remotely acceptable uh, the rival um, explanation for our labor's timidity, uh, timidity uh, is that they are not committed to root and branch reform because they are inherently neoliberal themselves. So basically, you have another, you have the Australian version of Republicans and Democrats. Like the UK has the same parties, pretty much as far as that part goes. Anyways, uh, uh, a light version of the conservatives without the extreme right tendencies on gender and those sorts of issues that dominate conservative politics. Uh, politics. So, for whom, uh, for whatever reason, the main challenges ahead are not being prosecuted or uh, prosecuted by the major parties. Uh, which means our society will just be compounded the unsustainable evolution under the neoliberals and the price we will increasingly pay in, is rising. Dominating public discussion recently has been the fact that the inflation rate has risen 5.1% and so the government has brought in a few measures to reduce the cost of living procedures or uh, pressures. So we get some ridiculously low cash transfer payment, which does little. We get a temporary cut in the fuel excise tax, which I've, I've been wanting this government to do. That means people still use their cars too much, including driving children to school to, in large SUVs that eat up the fuel. And not much else. I have proposed the government announces that all pro public transport in Australia will become free forever immediately, which would uh, accomplish short-term costs of living relief from the oil price rises as people substitute away from using a car to commute, etc., and take trains and, tra and trams, trams, which have excess capacity. But it will also accomplish longer-term goals of reducing carbon emissions and divert public infrastructure spending away from the road and freeway building, which just encourages more cars and absorbs uh, natural bushland, parks, etc. to accommodate the extra tarmac. During the lockdown stage of the pandemic, emissions fell dramatically and people could walk around their urban environments with much cleaner air and obviously better health outcome as a result. I had lunch with a journalist friend last Thursday in Melbourne and he said in response, well, the trains would be overcrowded. They would get more people on them than currently that is for sure and the government would have an incentive to increase the coverage and frequency of the mass transit system. It would be much better than commuting by car from the outer earth suburbs of our spread out cities for hours per hour or per day excuse me, in shocking gridlocks and gridlock traffic. But the government's response is to just reduce the cost of petrol for a few months and build more freeways. Another major issue that spans the cost of living question and living question and the environmental sustainability challenge challenge is housing. Australian government, both federal and state territories, have been obsessed with pursuing fiscal surpluses for several decades as well as outsourcing and privatizing everything public of value that they can identify. The first consequences or its first consequence has been a reduction in investment or in low income housing, so called social housing. Social housing is designed to provide secure and affordable accommodation for those who cannot afford to purchase housing in the open market as a result of their family income. It was a tradition in Australia that the state would provide such housing to allow families to have reasonable living spaces to bring up families and in many cases provide the opportunity for the family to save up to allow them to transit into private market while still enjoying a decent residence. 
I grew up on a public housing estate, and while the standard of accommodations were basic, we at least had housing security. That all changed from, from the 1980s as states opted to cut the construction of new social dwelling, one of the consequences of the obsessive fiscal surplus pursuit. I got tired of the treasuring, uh, treasurers claiming that they had to stop investing in housing to, out, to cut borrowing so they could preserve the AAA rating from the corrupt rating uh, agencies without acknowledging that the AAA rating was irrelevant uh, using their own flawed logic, logic if they weren't borrowing anyway. The problem has man uh, magnified with a massive shortfall in the social housing evidence. Various estimates of the current shortfall exist, depending on assumptions. One study from the City Futures Research Center at the UNSW uh, estimated that between 2011 and 2016, uh, it quotes, government expenditures on social housing decreased 7% uh, source. They estimated that a deficit of 650,000 social housing units would be experienced in uh, two, by, two 2035. Other estimates suggest a current shortfall of 450,000 houses. 155,141 households were on the waiting list, most recent data in 2020, although that is an under, underestimation, uh, is an understatement. Uh, and, underestimate. There we go. The proportion of the greatest need has risen from 28% of those on waiting lists to 2014 to 37.7% on 2020 and rising fast. The current federal government is proposing nothing in this regard other than to allow people to eat into their super annual wait a minute, super annual nation Okay. Uh, savings to fund a deposit in the inflation private market. Most of those who need a social housing don't have uh, the superannuation uh, balances worth ta talking about. The labor uh, proposition, sorry, opposition is promoting a prom promising just 30,000 new home uh, social houses. Pins. As a result of the way the various governments have managed the housing portfolios as they have chased surpluses and cut government sp investment spending growth, we have now seen housing become ridiculously expensive in Australia cities, which has created a wealth divided, uh, yeah, wealth divided uh, divide excuse me, between those who own and those who do not as well as ensuring households are carrying record levels of debt which makes their financial stability precarious to say the least and locking out the young Australians from the decent uh, housing. It is as they call it, as they say a clusterfuck. Of course it doesn't say fuck, but anyway, a cluster F. Moreover, the neoliberal era has seen an even greater bias in planning and zoning rules to favor property developers who erect large swaths of cheaply built houses on the edges of our city which then inflates in value and then and deliver less characters of massive profits but at what cost into the future a massive cost I saw an aerial shot of a development on the outskirts of Melbourne recently which shocked me uh, there's a, a there's a screenshot on the on the website again. Um, let's see, da, da, da. you could pay spot on the free on the tree game and not record a single observation. The typical outer uh, suburban development that corrupted councils have approved involves carbon intensive houses that occupy most of the building space, leaving every little green space or play space. These large ho uh, houses are energy monsters. They, they, they fill up formerly green spaces with concrete roads and roofs. 
In this particular development, there is very little solar installed, usually because the family cannot afford the installation because they are already in massive debt. The, the houses must only achieve a modest energy rate under the National Construction Code, which means they are leaky and require air conditioners in summer and heating in winter uh, often uses gas. Let's see. Our approach to urban design and development has been completely corrupted by the way the developers have ca uh, captured the local councils. In Newcastle, we are currently fighting a ridiculous proposal to overdevelop a small urban area with energy-eating set of towers that will choke up the environment and destroy the local uh, am amenity. The developer will make millions and the other community will lose. At the lunch I mentioned above will be uh, above will be with my journalist friend, we talked about urban design and what policies that could be developed by government to improve all this um, housing molasses. I said I would like to I would like the federal government, the current the currency issuer to reform the nation, the nation, the nationwide house, uh, yeah, nationwide house energy with, uh, rating scheme, which measures a home's energy deficiency and to uh, efficiency to generate a star rating. Under NHERS, the higher the star rating, the less energy needed to heat and cool the home to keep it comfortable. Currently, under the National Construction Code, all new residential dwellings in Australia, except NSW and NT, must achieve a, ma a minimum of six star ratings, which means they are not very efficient at all. Uh, I propose that the code be reformed to outlaw any housing below eight stars at energy rating. Building better, uh, building better proper, uh, properties or higher star ratings is more expensive, and so I also propose that the government create a fund to ensure that all new sustainable developments would be accessible to low-income families. This would fit with the concept of biodiversity sensitive, uh, sensitive urban design, or BSUD, which I have been increasingly studying over the last year or so. This report, uh, Biodiversity Sensitive Urban Design, from researchers at RMIT, Center for Urban Research, is a good start uh, point, a good starting point. <coughs> Excuse me. Biodiversity sens uh, Sensitive Urban Design, or BSUD, is a protocol for urban design that aims to create suburbs uh, that are a net benefit to a native spe species and ecosystems through the provision of essential habitat and food resources. The, suburb the suburban development um, picture about, uh, that was anyway, another picture, anyway, uh, typical of the way we are increasing the housing stock is the anthema of B BSUD. It offers no biodiversity, eliminates nature from the urban landscape, creates massive heat sinks, requires increased drainage solutions to prevent localized flooding, and produces in inefficient housing that further increases carbon emissions. The report cited notes that in the case of Victoria, in quotes, the native temperament, uh, temperate uh, grassland, grasslands of the Victorian volcanic, volcanic plain are amongst the most endangered ecosystems in Australia. More than 99% of the original extent has been cleared or converted to agriculture and less than 0.1% remains in good condition. Much of the remaining grassland exists in areas designed or uh, de uh, designated excuse me, as growth corridors for Melbourne and thus these great, uh, grasslands and the species are inha inhabit that inhabit them are threatened by urban development. So a major action is required now to regenerate the land and to rethink uh, the way we develop our urban spaces. What have uh, what have the major political parties to say on this? 
nothing. A good model for BSUD is that I am part of the regional Victoria, the, uh, the, the Cape. The Age newspaper article December 5th, 2020, Super uh, Sustainable Housing Development, the Cape at Ca uh, the Cape at Cape P Patterson ripes in the new time of COVID, labeled the Cape, uh, in quotes, All, uh, Australia's most sustainable housing development. The development on the coast side, uh, south side of Melbourne, my favorite area in the world, was formerly a 40 ha dairy farm, which had left the landscape band, uh, ban barren with low biodiversity. The Cape Patterson, the local village, is on the coast in a holiday town with a small resident population. The developers uh, or environmental, uh, environmental activists purchased the farm and uh, after many years of resistance from council managed to persuade them to improve the sustainable development. The land area might typically contain nine, 900, 900 odd houses along the lines in the, there's a photo, uh, but this development will only have 220 house, housing sites uh, with more than 50% of the, est uh, the estate used for uh, community farm, natural gas, inhabited regions, wetland restoration, and more natural, uh, more nature enhanced, uh, enhancing spaces. The community farm provides or, um, organic food security for residents and others. Okay, so uh, all the housing must meet minimum energy rates uh, ratings above 7.5% and preferable higher and all rely on thermal mass, smart location and good design to achieve the massive, I'm sorry, the passive stature, uh, passive statues. Houses that are uh, say eight star rate overall are mostly much higher than that closer to 10 and the difference is because some house designs to fit the block need halfways oh sorry hallways to transition between some sections of the house the, uh, the hallways bring down the ratings while the functional living space is at the highest level of efficiency uh, I have personally experienced this uh, experiences um, Experiences in this issue. There we go. Residents pay a higher building cost, but they enjoy running their houses as an estimated cost of 15% the average running cost of a home in Victoria. The Cape uh, will become a model will become a model for urban development in Australia, but it will also require massive government intervention or regular shifts and funding to to make it a reality for the nation. This article in the uh, Hort Journal, uh, April 5th, 2022, the CAPE, uh, a uh, zero emissions housing community, provides a good account of what is happening in BSUD, I'll just say that, in terms of, the, of this development. <coughs> Conclusion. The problem is that neither political party is prepared to make an issue uh, and take, uh, prepared to take on issues that will define the future path of our society. We simply cannot t keep uh, depriving people of housing per se and allowing the sort of developments that create massive profits for developers while create uh, zero biodiversity in our landscape and shoddy inefficient housing. Yes, the outlay on the sustainable housing project for residents is higher, but that can only, but that can easily be funded by government as a display of leadership. <coughs> that should become a priority for the federal government uh, to ensure all families can live in such developments rather than see them restrict, uh, restricted to high level, high income households. Neoliberals, uh, neoliberalism is a myopic. Part of the cost of living squeeze right now is the result of poor decisions in the past, reliance on cars, under underinvestment in mass transit systems, and poor zoning and uh, housing policies. Developments such as the Cape present an alternative model for the future at 
will all uh, will uh, it will allow professionals like me to work remotely while mi miss sorry minimizing our ecological uh, footprint and ultimately it will result in, in cheaper housing over the lifetime of the asset and much healthier uh, natural landscape okay well that's enough for today as far as that part goes um, again uh, if you want to uh, read more of Bill Mitchell's uh, articles and blog and all that uh, you can go to bilbo.economicoutlook.net uh, and I'll also be putting the uh, I would also be putting the uh, the uh, link uh, in the description below um, anyways thanks for watching um, look forward to me reading uh, the MMT textbook on my substack again that's calvintaylor.substack.com and also I look forward to, uh, to you guys visiting me at the protest uh, about tomorrow and Thursday uh, it seems like they both start at 12 uh, so thanks for watching and I look forward to seeing you there peace out for now North Korea has that. 32 out of 33 modern industrialized countries have that. How are you going to pay for it? We're going to be like North Korea. We'll have to borrow the money from China. Where are you going to find the money?